Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. I'm delighted to see you all here this morning in the sanctuary. Delighted to have you joining us uh, online this morning as well. A special word of welcome to those of you visiting with us in either place. We are particularly grateful uh, for your presence with us in worship today and hope that you find this time of worship together to be meaningful uh, in your life. It is a special day in the life of our church as we will uh, welcome and worship uh, our newest member of the church received by the session this past month. Uh, So we will look forward to that a little bit later in our service. Um, And also you'll see a rose on the communion table uh, today. We celebrate and rejoice uh, with Brian, Tiffany, and Brooklyn Hall and slightly proud grandparents Rodney and Tammy Hall uh, on the new addition to their family, Mr. Houston Bronx Hall, who was born on April the 7th uh, of of this week. So we welcome him into the world and, and pray for he and his family. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please rise now in body or spirit, however you're comfortable, and join me in the call to worship. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Let us worship God.
please join me in the prayer of the day? Risen Christ, whose absence leaves us paralyzed, but whose presence is overwhelming, breathe on us with your abundant life, that where we cannot see, we may have courage to believe, that we may be raised with you. Amen. The psalmist models a transparent faith with these words. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. We express our lo longing for God's leading by our own transparent confession. Let us pray together. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new that we may know the joy of life abundantly given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. <clears throat> Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To this peace we are called as members of a single body. The peace of Christ be with you. invite our young disciples forward to come plot yourself on a little carpet square. All righty, good, good morning, everyone. We have a carpet square over there. So today I have with me two forms of identification. I don't know if in tandem they'll actually get me anywhere on any application or anything like that. But I have with me this. Who's familiar with what this is? Who can tell me? Who knows? Now, this one right here is an Oklahoma driver's license right here. This allows me to operate a car and 
go into places and prove who I am to just about everyone, at least in the state of Oklahoma, if not around the U.S. Now, who can tell me what this one? Can you see it? What's this? Nope, this is my driver's license, but this one is a student ID, and this is a really cool card because it also comes with privileges like a driver's license. This one used to, at least, have meal points on it so I could swipe in, get all kinds of food at OU, and it also allows me to check out any book I want up to like 70 out of the OU library. This is a crazy cool card. Comes with so many privileges. So why do we have IDs? Who knows? Any ideas? So what was that, Jack? To prove who you are. People don't believe us when we tell them who we are. So we show them plastic cards with our faces on them. It makes no sense, but we do it. Today's story is about someone who did not quite believe who someone else was. And I'll explain here in a second. On the Sunday that Jesus rose from the grave, he appeared to a group of his disciples. And one person was missing from the group, and his name was Thomas. And this is a very important person. Thomas was missing from the group. And so when the other disciples came to Thomas and they told him that Jesus was alive and that he appeared to them, he did not believe them. He said, I won't believe it until I see with my own eyes. I want to see the nail prints in his hand and put my hand in the place where the spear was thrust into his side. So a week passes by and Jesus appears to the disciples again. And Thomas this time is with them. And Jesus says to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Put your hand into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And then Thomas believed him, right? Jesus had to appear to Thomas so that Thomas would believe him. He couldn't believe him without seeing him. And Jesus tells us that we are blessed for those of us who have not seen and yet still believe. That's what faith is all about. None of us have personally seen physical Jesus, right? He died a long time ago, was risen again a long time ago. But we all still believe in Jesus, right? And that's a very powerful thing. That's what faith is all about. So will you guys pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sin. Help us to accept by faith that Jesus has risen from the grave and that he is alive. Will you pray the Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, guys.
Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3. If you're following in your pew Bible, you can find that on page 575. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. This is the word of the Lord.
Now turning to the 20th chapter of John's Gospel, beginning with verse 19 today. It can be found on page 115 in your pew Bible. Listen again for the word of the Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. 
Thomas answered him, my Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in you, believing, you may have life in his name. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So who is your favorite disciple? Thomas might be mine. I can relate to his weakness, and his faith certainly inspires and informs my own. Part of his witness and that of the other disciples is in their grief story, how they reacted to the physical death of Jesus. Grief has a vastness to it, particularly grief that comes with death. The grief we feel at the end of a long life well lived is far different from the grief we feel at the loss of the life of a child, a life never given a chance to grow. The grief of sudden tragic loss is far different from the grief of loss that ends terrible suffering. In time of grief, some people like to surround themselves with people. They find comfort in talking to friends and loved ones. Others like to retreat into their cave, their inner space, and take time to absorb their new reality. I'm somewhere in the middle. I want to be in my cave, but with, as Henry Nouwen said, the friend who can be silent with us in a moment of despair or confusion, who can stay with us in an hour of grief and bereavement, who can tolerate not knowing, not healing, not curing. That is a friend who cares. What do we need to know about Thomas besides his doubting? Well, Thomas was brave. Look at chapter 11. Thomas was ready to go and die for and with his Lord. Others were hesitant and afraid, but Thomas, Thomas was ready to go to Jerusalem. He never lacked courage. Doubt is not a lack of courage. Thomas was a pessimist. When Jesus died on the cross, that is exactly what Thomas thought would happen. And it left him heartbroken. Even when the expected comes, it can leave us heartbroken if we love someone. And Thomas clearly loved Jesus. Thomas chose to be alone with his grief. So when the big it happened, when Jesus appeared, he missed it. Now we learn of his doubting nature. Jesus came back. Great. I missed it. Of course I missed it. Wait a minute. That sounds too good to be true. Prove it. He refused to believe what was too good in his mind to be possible. Thomas had other good virtues besides his courage. He refused to say that he understood what he did not understand or that he believed what he did not believe. Thomas is an uncompromisingly honest person. When he was sure, when he was finally sure, he was also fully committed. He doubted only because he needed to be sure. Once he was sure, his certainty was complete. With faith, when people fight their way through doubts, to the conviction that Jesus Christ is Lord, there is a certainty with that that those who unthinkingly accept things can never reach. Jesus speaks of all of their fear saying, peace be with you. 
a typical greeting in that time, but here much more than that. Jesus turns that typical everyday greeting on its head. It was not the kind of peace we thought we wanted that promises green grass and blue skies forever, a peace that brings military victory, an easy peace. It was certainly not a peace that assures that the disciples that there would be no problems ahead, that things would go well for them in the service of their Lord, that somehow they would be spared the pain and the suffering. That just wasn't the case. The peace to which Jesus refers is altogether different. It is the peace that comes from knowing that even the worst that the surrounding world of evil can do cannot prevent that which God intends to accomplish. Jesus offers the nail prints in his hands, the wound in his side as evidence, but also as a lesson. The peace of God does not remove us from a world, a world of pain and suffering. Rather, it gives us victory over it, victory in spite of it. With that assurance, with that assurance, Jesus then commissions, commissions the disciples. He dispatches them into the world, pushing them from behind their locked doors. Jesus sends the disciples right back into the world from which they have retreated in fear. In one powerful sense, the risen Christ joins the mission of the church with his own mission, saying, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. They do not go on their own strength, but are able to do so only under the power of the Holy Spirit. And so immediately upon commissioning them, Jesus empowers them. Jesus breathes the new creative breath of the Spirit on them, instructing them, receive it. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive it into your life. So that in the context of this new life, this new life given by the presence of the Spirit, they are to represent Jesus Christ in the world. So that through their witness, the world will come to the place of making a decision for or against the revelation of God in Jesus Christ. Jesus breathed on the frightened disciples the breath of new life and it changed everything, transformed everything, made them new, made them effective, and set them on their way to fulfilling God's purpose for their life. Alfred Lloyd Tennyson wrote way back in 1849, there lives more faith in honest doubt than in half the creeds. Close to two centuries later, his words ring true to my experience of life. That is why I have hope for those struggling with faith. The worst part of my brother's short battle with cancer and death last year was hearing my niece say to me, I never believed in the devil before, but when I saw the pain my dad was experiencing, I don't know if I can believe in God anymore. I understand how Becca felt when she spoke those words to me, but I also have faith and confidence that God will not leave her stuck in that place forever. You see, Easter faith does not allow that. Easter faith does not bear witness to that. In this passage, Jesus tells us that Easter is not over. Easter has only begun. And if we are to be Easter people, The story continues within the lives of each one of us, the rest of our lives and beyond. 
Easter moves us quickly from the creed, He is risen, to a calling. Go and tell my story. Go and remind the hungry and the hurting, those with thin faith and those who have none at all. Not just He is risen, but He has risen indeed. And this is how that has changed and is changing the way I am living my life right now. God is not finished with you. The Easter story is alive and unfolding in each of us this very day. Thanks be to God for an uncomfortable but abiding peace that accompanies us through every moment of life and through death. <laughs> to my Becca and to us all, I wish for you, far from an easy peace, but may the peace of Christ be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Switching gears, it is now our extreme pleasure to welcome into our membership uh, Selena Rosado, uh, who joined the church at the last meeting of the session. So I would invite Selena to come forward and, and meet me at the top of the steps. Barbara Charlotte, representing our session. On behalf of the session, I present Selena Rosado, who has been received into the membership of this congregation by reaffirmation of faith. Okay. Selena, you have come to us as a member of the One Holy Catholic Church, into which you were baptized, and by which you have been nurtured. We are one with each other, sisters and brothers in the family of God. We rejoice in the gifts that you bring to us as you join with us in the worship and service of this congregation. It is fitting that together we reaffirm the covenant into which we were baptized, claiming again the promises of God, which are ours in our baptism. Hear these words from Holy Scripture from Galatians chapter 3, 27 and 28. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have closed yourself with Christ, there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male or female, for all of you are in Jesus Christ. Selena, baptism is the sign and seal of our cleansing from sin and of our being grafted into Christ through the birth, life, death, and resurrec resurrection of Christ, the power of sin was broken, and God's kingdom entered our world. Through our baptism, we were made citizens of God's kingdom and freed from the bondage of sin. Let us celebrate that freedom and redemption through the renewal of the promises made at our baptism. So, Selena, therefore, I ask you once again, if you are to reject sin and to profess your faith in Christ Jesus and to confess the faith of the church in which we were baptized, do you now renounce all evil and powers in the world which defy God's righteousness and love? Do you renounce the ways of sin that separate you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love to your life's end? Now I invite you all to stand as with the whole church we confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He asked into hell and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Selena, you have publicly professed your faith. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation? Share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Okay. This is the time in the service when we generally would invite all church officers, elders, deacons, uh, ministers of word and sacrament to come forward for laying on of hands. But what I'd like to do is invite you to now come forward for a touching of the shawl and then a socially distanced disbursement in the front of the sanctuary. So if elders, deacons, uh, ministers of word and sacrament would please come forward if you feel comfortable doing so. Uh, offer a prayer for Selena as you uh, touch a prayer shawl that will go with her. Um, in lieu of laying on of hands in this time of distancing. I'll share with you that Selena is our newest member, and it's a good thing that you're here today because we will not be seeing Selena much. Selena is a, a very gifted organist and is preparing to uh, start a graduate program at a school. I'm not sure if it's decided yet or being disclosed yet, um, but wants to anchor herself in this congregation uh, so that she might uh, be a part of us wherever life's journey takes her. So fitting uh, that she might have this shawl to be able to take uh, on her way uh, in life. I'm going to hold my breath. Okay. Let us pray. Faithful God, you work in us and for us even when we do not know it. When our path has led us away from you, you guide us back to yourself. We thank you for calling your servant, Selena, to the fellowship of your people. Renew this day the covenant you made in baptism and by the power of your spirit. Strengthen Selena in faith and love to serve you with joy. To the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in welcoming Selena into the worship and mission of the church. With, with joy, joy and, and thanksgiving, thanksgiving we, we welcome you to share with us in the ministry of Christ, Christ for, for we are, are all one, one in him. him. Amen. Please return to your seats.
church has different ways to receive your pledges, tithes, and offerings. If you're worshiping with us today, there are offering plates located by the doors as you ex exit the sanctuary. Please drop your offering in the plate. If you're worshiping with us from home today, you can support us through Venmo, search for FPC OKC, through the website at www.fpcokc.org, click the Give button on the home page, or you can mail your contribution to the church. Thank you for your support of the ministry of First Presbyterian Church. Now let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Let us worship God with our pledges, tithes, and offerings.
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. We ask your blessing also on our purple bag food offering. Bless those who filled them and those who will receive them. Amen. Friends, the proof of God's amazing love is just this. You're alive. You were given the gift of this life. And in God's mercy, you've been kept all the days of your life. And as a sign of God's ever-redeeming grace, your life has been redeemed for a purpose. So I charge you to go out from this place and continue living in the midst of God's purpose for your life. And as you do, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make the light of his face to shine upon you and bring you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>